Thank you for coming. Uh, I am Michelle. This is my lovely co-host, Peanut. Today we're going to be talking about budgeting tips, uh, ways to spend your money more wisely, because, you know, cosplay is an expensive hobby. So you're going to have to spend some money on it, but here's how you can spend maybe a little bit less. Without further ado, low cost play. Yes, we thought of that like an After hour. After we made the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's low cost play. So today we're going to be going over in order. We got intros, um, then we'll talk about planning your cosplay. So literally, what character are you going to do? And then how are you going to construct that from head to toe? We'll go in that order then from wigs, makeup and contact lenses, buying cosplay and making cosplay, because those are both valid forms of cosplay. No judgment here. People do it all the time. I buy and I make. Then we'll also do some prop making, and last but not least, we'll wrap up with photo shoots and conventions, because those are also two really important parts of cosplay. You know, you want to see what people are wearing, you want to have photos of what you worked really hard to make. Last, so we'll do a Q&A, so if anyone has any questions, I don't bite. If for some reason we go over time, I don't bite. <laughs> if for any reason we um, go over time here, I will be more than happy to just like chill in the hallway and talk with people. I'll probably do that anyway, because they're cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I am Michelle, also known as Michelle, also known as Shell Bell Cosplay on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, this is why you should feel comfortable listening to me about this subject today. These are my qualifications. <laughs> um, I started in 2016, about three, four years ago now. Like Anime Boston 2016 is my first con. I have been super lucky. <laughs> You're nodding. I was there. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, I was super lucky enough to go to England this past spring to study abroad. So I've been lucky enough to attend both conventions in the whole New England area and England as well. I got to go to really awesome clubs like MC in London and stuff like that. The community over there is super cool. Uh, my cheapest cosplay, my claim, my claim to fame is free. I have made multiple free cosplays. This is one of them. Um, this all came out of my closet. And my most expensive cosplay on the other end of the spectrum is 117, which some people may balk at, but that's actually still pretty cheap in terms of making your cosplay. Hi, I'm Peanut, also known as Peanut Butter Buttercup. I don't have a real name. Um, I also started cosplaying in 2016, and me and Shell actually met at Shell's first con, so that's pretty fun. Um, I've done only really New England conventions so far. The farthest I've gotten, I think, was. Um, probably uh, A&C and Granicon. Um, the cheapest cosplay I've made is also free. That was kind of a, just like a cost test. And the most expensive actually just went up to a $167 cosplay. Oh, um, change that. Yeah, oops. Uh, well, it happened today. Or here today. Um, How timely. It, yes. So that is, that's me. Yeah, okay. So in terms of planning, first thing to think about is kind of an unfortunate truth that realistic or more simple characters is ultimately going to be cheaper than an insane fantasy character from some fantasy anime or video game. If you can find it at a thrift store, if it already exists in real life, like it's a t-shirt, like my lovely friend Silver Falcon Cosplay is wearing in the back, $4 t-shirt at Target clearance section, that's going to be a lot cheaper and easier to find than a diva suit. No, no shame to you. You look awesome. <laughs> um, once you have picked that character, you want to create a head-to-toe list. This is how people most typically do it when they're playing a cosplay. So when I do it, I literally start from the top of my head, like any hair accessories, earrings, wig, and I go into any specific makeup, then I go all the way down my body to the tips of my toes. <laughs> Um, and this includes like anything special, like tattoos or specific jewelry it's items. My expensive cosplay, Kazuichi. I was like, oh, it's only sixty-seven dollars. We got this, and I forgot I need to buy contacts and I need to buy the fake teeth. Yeah. And that bought, that put it up to one sixty-seven. It was hundred dollars for both the teeth and the. It gets intense fast. Um, once you have a list, one of the best things you can do to save money is to make an initial budget based on what you know you need. This doesn't mean you have to stick strictly to the budget. You can go a little over, you can go a little under. But it's good to have a plan in place so you're more conscientious as you are making a cosplay about what you're spending on it. It's ultimately going to make it more thoughtful. Um, a huge tip I have is to try the Cosplanner app if you haven't heard of it already. It's free on both iOS and Android phones. You can list every single element of your cosplay, whether you're buying it or you're making it, what kind of progress you have. The picture I have up there is a literal screenshot from a costume I'm working on right now of like um, Greg from Over the Garden Wall. I'm making like a little leader dress. Um, 
And do you want to go over our last project for people? Uh, yeah. No one to invest in an expensive thing. Back to Kazuichi cosplay. Um, I bought the suit at the cheapest price I could, which was 67 I knew that that would be, uh, I thought that would be the most expensive. And for the teeth, I was going through the idea of do I make them or do I buy them. And I decided to go for the more expensive bought teeth because you have to think about, will I use this for other characters? And do I, this is going to go in my mouth. Do I really want hot glue and nails in my mouth? Yeah, so probably it's not. Really know like, when something you need is good. Like if, Especially if you're getting a wig for a character, you know you can use it for other characters. Get a good wig. Yeah. Like, this wig's ratty as hell. Get a good wig. <laughs> Um, this is my $40 wig. I bought it years and years ago, and I actually bought it after initially buying a cheaper wig. I planned to do Heather Chandler from the Heather's Musical. I bought a blonde wig on Amazon that I ended up, you know, using for other characters, but once I initially got it, I was like, oh no, this isn't gonna work. I should have just gotten a really nice wig first. And like, because I need to, I knew I needed to heat style him. So let's talk about wigs. <laughs> Here's the thing, I have a bit of a controversial opinion, and that is that I kind of have a grudge against Arda Wigs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so glad you agree. So Just so you know, the speaker notes says prepare for rant, pretty much. <laughs> um, so don't get me wrong, Arda Wigs is a great company to make really, really high quality products. If you need intense heat styling or really thick fibers or like sculpture on your head. If you literally need a sculpture on your head, like a Goku anime wig that's completely <laughs> vertical, go for Arda. It's gonna be worth it. If you don't need that, maybe, you know, Asmonium. Bypass the uh, the crazy art of back order policies where it takes just six months to get a wig these days <laughs> and like fifty dollars for even a short one. <laughs> Uh, and try another company. There's a ton of other companies out there. I've listed so many up on there. It's generally in order of most expensive to least expensive. So like Epic Cosplay is probably like the next step down from Arda. They're significantly cheaper than Arda though. I wanted to get a lace front from Arda and it was 80 and then Epic Cosplay the same exact way possibly better quality. <laughs> yeah, it's really a huge discount. There's also so many other companies that people just don't know about because I don't really take the time to research into them. I think Five Woods might be here. Oh, yeah. are they? I'm not sure. Five Woods is great. Highly recommend it, especially if you need a specific character wig. Um, for general wigs, I really like Amazon, honestly. People always ask me how you get wigs for Amazon and like don't get total crap. Reviews. That is our next point. You need to read reviews. That's why that's in all caps. You, whenever you're buying anything for cosplay, read reviews. I don't care if you're buying it on Arda. I don't care if you're buying it on eBay. Look for reviews. Look at the pictures. See what the lighting is like. See if it's shiny. Compare the prices. Never buy the first thing you see just because it's the first thing you found. A huge tip I have, especially for shopping on Amazon for wigs, is they have a search box in the review section above like the questions and answers where you can literally, oh no, the search bar, you can literally type in keywords and it will bring up reviews with those keywords. So I like to always type in cosplay and you will find other cosplayers who write reviews of those products. They may even be doing the same character as you and they will typically have a higher standard for that product than someone who's buying that wig for Halloween. Another pro Amazon tip is they have a section where you can say price low to high. That's helpful, but it lies. Uh, they do not put the lowest price at the top. You have to scroll and then you will find cheaper, but like much faster than if you were to just like keep going. So that is a good tool to use, even if it's not perfect. Moral of the story, look around, do your research. And one thing I want to point out before we move on to the next slide that I think people always forget, people sell things second hand. It sounds crazy, but they do. There's so, so many Facebook groups and Instagram pages solely dedicated to people trying to sell their cosplay that they no longer want to use, usually in really great condition. That's a great place that. to find Get an art away. If you want an art away and you don't want to pay for their price or like wait for their shipping, go to any of those pages and just type in art. You will find a ton of results. Wig 911! Uh, this wig was a 911 wig, so how do you care for a cheap wig if it's really bad? Because a lot of them are. There's a lot of things you can do to reduce shine. It's really like dry shampoo baby powder. Fabric softener. Actually, fabric softener works for any wig. I highly suggest you just clean fabric softener. Um, to prevent tangles. Oh, ignore this. <laughs> um, hairspray. A lot of it. So the way that you should typically brush out a tangled wig that's a ratty mess and you think you can never fix again, soak it in shampoo and softener, 
and then brush from bottom to top section by section. If you brush from the top, the tension in the fibers will only cause it to not worse. I can brush this out to completely straight if I want to, and this has been intense. Yep, yeah, I've done it. Um, and it still works. It can go from this to that. And so it's really actually easy to brush out a tangled wig. It just takes time. And this is my dumb pro tip that actually works. If you want to brush out a really tangled wig, hold that sucker with your leg, sit on the floor, and brush it out that way. That's how I, that's how I do all of my wigs, and it works really well. If you have thin fibers, oh, this wig actually has really thin fibers. It's really dry shampoo. It's easy to add wefts to a wig, more easy than you think. And eyeshadow markers like to get free shampoo. I just, um, the last slide, my Supergirl wig, those brown roots are just completely eyeshadow. That was a completely blonde wig. That was a 15 buck wig. I absolutely love it. I'm wearing to Comic Con in a few weeks. Eyeshadow um, coping markers. And yeah. just make sure you rinse it slightly afterwards so it doesn't get everywhere, but otherwise. Yeah, don't get it on your hands, but mm, it'll work. Um, one point to, one thing to point out, this picture seems kind of random. Uh, it's me, you know, being my hamster granola bar eating self mm -hmm. at London Comic Con this past May, and I put it up there because that is my Blossom cosplay from Powerpuff Girls. I was in a Powerpuff Girls group, and I already had an orange wig at home. I didn't want to pay to have it shipped to me, so I wanted just like a $5 orange wig that I could wear once and throw away. That was a $5 orange wig. It was four feet long. I brushed it out with hairspray, and I actually, I used vegetable oil on it. <laughs> it works. I, I literally took vegetable oil, like cooking oil, put it on a paper towel, put it on the hair, and then combed through. It did not tangle on me once during the day. Um, I put dry shampoo on top, it was not shiny. I put a lot of hairspray in there, and it, you know, it doesn't look like an expensive wig. I thought, that, I thought that was your other wig. You did? I did. I did. Maybe it does look like it's <laughs> not Yeah, so... What's your... What brand was the other orange wig? The other... That's also an Amazon wig. <laughs> I was gonna say, orange... Don't yeah. underestimate yeah. Amazon wigs, guys. It's great. Good. Moving on to makeup. Drugs or makeup? Heck yeah. Don't think you need to go to Sephora and get like all that urban decay stuff that's like $40 a product like on your face. Like drugstore makeup is honestly so good these days. If you see a really high-end brand come out with something that's really expensive and kind of new, literally every single other brand will just copy that. It's just a James matter Charles of months. sister scandal to get your palette. <laughs> I did that. It's, it's literally a matter of months um, before uh, like CoverGirl and L'Oreal and Maybelline and all these affordable drugstore brands are going to recreate that product that like Urban Decay made. So I have really great liquid eyeliner that I got at CVS for five bucks. <laughs> that's basically just a knockoff of Kat Von D. Um, that's a really great way to learn when you're practicing with products. If you do want to eventually make that investment, you know, try it out with a cheaper product first. See if you it's suitable for you. See if you know how to use it properly. I used to absolutely suck at eyeliner. What I did was I got a $5 eyeliner and used it every single day for a year. And then I walked and bought my $25 eyeliner because now I knew how to use it properly. Um, some really great online brands that I really like. Online brands, oh, that's fun. Online brands are Costa Sense. That is a picture of their 88 original eyeshadow palette. It's only $10. They always have sales. Their shipping is almost always free. Recommend them. Check them out. Jcat Beauty is also a really great one that's on Instagram, actually. They have a really great account. They make so many like, pigmented shadows and like cream. It's crazy. <sighs> As someone whose mom works for L'Oreal, here's some, a pro tip that I will share with you. Secret. If you go into Sephora and say, mention that your birthday is coming up, they'll give you a packet of free stuff. My setting powder, eyeliner, and one other, and a little bunch of sample lipsticks that I actually used to do this are um, completely free that I got because I went in there and I mentioned it was my birthday. So if you say it's your birthday and you don't go in there like every month and say it's your birthday, <laughs> they'll give it to you and not question it. You get to choose between like a Cap on D bag or another one, and you get little sample sizes of everything, and it's really helpful. I'm doing that, thanks. Um, yeah, even if you don't like do that, make use of those sample counters. Yeah. They're there for a reason. They want you to use them and test out those products. You can always, almost always get a sample if like you ask of someone. Like if you go into Lush or something, they always want to give you samples. They will send you home with as many samples as they can. Um, if you don't know how to use those things, there's so many makeup tutorials on YouTube. It's a whole thing these days. Watch reviews. Read, like Google, literally how I picked out a super niche character and they'll have a tutorial for it. Literally how I picked out my primer that I still use today is I Googled best drugstore makeup primers and found a whole list of them on like Cosmo. Like a whole article. It's 
it's just ridiculous. It's, it's easy. easy to, makeup doesn't need to be as expensive as they make it. It's silly. Mm -hmm. Although I will say, it's best in a giant palette. You don't know what colors you'll need. If you're starting out, it's not a bad idea to get a big palette. There's a new palette at Sephora that's fairly cheap for a palette. It's not as cheap as $10, but I think it's like in the $20-25 range. And it's shaped like a laptop. All the keys are the eyeshadows, and it's cheap, and it's cute, and I like it. So pro tip. <laughs> Do you want to tell us all about contact lenses? Yes, I do. So I was going. I bought contact my first pair of contact lenses for this con and couldn't wear them because I am a wuss. But uh, a lot of cosplayers have coupon codes in their bio for different contact lens websites. Personally, I like Unique so, even though they did have a scandal recently. But first of all, the reason I like Unique so, it was my first time getting lenses, and they sent me an email specifically personally from an employee explaining how to use lenses. And when I asked another question, they actually responded with a real person. My lenses came in a few days. They were good quality. They put a few gifts in there. But also, the reason I like Unique Smoke is they're often the cheapest. And also, just look for deals when spending. Um, what is it? Unique So has a big summer blow going on right now, and they always have coupon codes. I literally Googled Unique So coupon codes, and they just spit out a list. There's some codes that'll like get two contact lenses free. So like. Check that out. It's really important. Yeah. Um, so if you want to invest in contacts, especially you know, like there's ways to save money. But if you're not ready to do that, don't worry. Just Photoshop. A lot of Photoshop programs are free. It's also good to know, like especially if you have brown eyes, it literally can pass for almost any character. Um, if you have like blue to green eyes, they can pass for either blue or green. Uh, don't, so like, don't go into like specific nitty gritties. It, like, yeah. usually the only reason I get contact lenses now is if the character has like super unnatural eyes, like bright red, bright pink, anything mm -hmm. like that. And that's when I spend my money on lenses. But otherwise, it's not a necessity, which is important. Yeah. Follow your dreams, but don't feel pressured to do something that you're not ready to invest in. Um, so now on to into buying cosplay. We're going to go over a couple of options of buying cosplay. The first is if you are piecing it together, which is my preferred method of making cosplay. <laughs> the first thing you want to do is to absolutely raid every single closet in your house. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Um, literally everything I'm wearing today came out of my closet. It was just bought for previous cosplays and I just put it all together. If you can't tell, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cult leader. So another thing I really really like to do for cosplays, which kind of circles back to our realistic simple characters, is going thrifting. If it already exists in real life, chances are you will find it at some sort of thrift store. I have found really weird things at boots. thrift stores. Boots, 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 boots. Shoes are such a good thing to go thrifting for because shoes are so expensive when they're new. Sometimes the shoes are the most expensive thing I buy for my entire They were my most expensive for Nikki and their sneakers. <laughs> yeah. Um, whereas I found literally these amazing black and white saddle heels at a thrift store for nine bucks. They're 60 bucks new on Amazon. Thrift stores are amazing. Like I said, basics, shoes, t-shirts, things, skirts, pants, those can be bought absolutely anywhere. These pants are from TJ Maxx like two years ago. They were like, oh, yeah. this is from Michaels. Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so These are my dad's. <laughs> <laughs> right every closet. My, Ooh, my, every mom, closet. my mom donated her wedding dress to a cosplay. That's what I'm saying. Like, look through attics. Like, go through all your old things. Yeah. Ask Steal. your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Still consensually. <laughs> um, so, well, you know, closets, not just closets, but Forever 21, eBay, Amazon. Literally, I've gone to garage sales and found things that I could use for cosplay. Just explore your options. If you are piecing things together, even if you bought a full cosplay but you need a little accessory, look around, you know? Kazuichi's little belt thing has a screw on it, and I literally put a bunch of real screws on it, so <laughs> go for that. Especially if a cosplay has like a really niche little accessory, you can probably either make that for super cheap or find that for super cheap. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, a great way to also kind of save some money on cosplays, it's not super reliable, but you can enter giveaways. Uh, Instagram has them, people on Instagram do them, companies do them that are represented on Instagram, websites do them all the time for different sales. Even if you don't like win, it's kind of fun to enter because you get to know new cosplayers. A lot of them require that you follow them to enter, but I found so many new cosplayers through entering giveaways, so it's, it's like a fun little thing. To it's do. like benign gambling. Yeah. <laughs> 
now, option two of buying cosplay is buying a whole pre-made outfit. This is a photo of my Diana cosplay from Little Witch Academia. Yes. Oh, thank you. I love it so much. Um, karaoke is going. So I looked around for this outfit for several months before finally landing on one I wanted to purchase, which is, you know, why planning in advance and doing research is important. It will save you a lot. Oh my honestly. God. Um, I almost bought this secondhand for $60. I almost bought it from AliExpress for $40. And then I found this one on eBay for $25. <laughs> Look around. <laughs> um, so if you can find it secondhand, that's a great option too. Again, Facebook, Instagram, so many people are trying to sell their cosplays, guys. Yeah. I can't go Hit me up! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, you know, don't buy the first one. Find it again. I almost spent $60 when I couldn't put 25 This is a thing that I'm heated about. But the size charts. A lot of cosplays are in Asian sizes. And Asian sizes, even if it has a size chart, go up. You can always take in, but you can't add the exact fabric. No. And there's also another thing, this is BS. This is utter BS. <laughs> but <Consulting>. Asian, <laughs> Asian sizes require that as the costume goes up a size, so does the price. Which this is, is true. BS. Unless it's like a custom-made costume, I get that you're making it from hand. Yeah. But like, what? An extra few feet of fabric should not cost that much, but you have to do it. So if you see a costume and it's like 20 bucks, and you're like, great, I'll add it to my cart. Click the size, because it'll go up. The price will probably it's change. It's insane, and it's very silly, yeah. but that's what happens. And always go a size up. It's so much easier to take in fabric than it is to not. If you have even like the most basic of sewing skills, even if you don't have a machine, so it's pretty simple to alter something. You know, take in the seams on the side a little bit. You know, take in the hem on the pants. This is my first thing I Even just showed. safety pin it. Just mm -hmm. even safety pins will safety work to make something fit yeah. you. Yeah. This was my first thing I ever sewed. Um, and it's the little things on the side of her thing. Also on that side, we, uh, look for reviews, oh especially if you're buying from a company like Mike Costumes or Roll Cosplay or Cosplay Sky. All of those companies partner with cosplayers on YouTube and also Instagram to send them costumes in exchange for reviews. So you literally can just go to a YouTube search bar and type in the company name and even type in the cosplay and you will probably find a review of that exact costume. Just so if you see someone, you know, putting it on on video and talking about the stitch quality and like, you know, the headlines and the fabric, yeah. that is going to be the actual product you're most likely to get. That's going to yeah. be the most accurate representation you're going to find from another cosplayer. What if you're not buying it? What if you're a crafty, crafty, crafty? <laughs> That's you! <laughs> That's you, friend! Hey. This was um our gang Heather's cosplays that we made ourselves. It was super fun. It's taken me this long to realize what that shirt was for. <laughs> <laughs> Painting the balance. I'm about place. to get a little intense here. Use coupons! Oh my god! Oh my god do it. Use coupons! Literally both Joanne Fabrics and Michael's Crafts, which are the stores I go to the most, but like every single craft store does this. They all have coupons every single week on their website. The coupons change weekly, but every single week they always have one coupon for 30% off or 40% off any single regular price item. So I've got an entire bolts of fabric for 40% off. You know, if you go to Joanne's, that includes a cut of fabric. So I have bought entire hot glue guns for 40% off. Like, if you're just buying one thing, still use a coupon. That is another thing, you know, instead of going to Joanne's, fabric is almost always going to be cheaper somewhere else. Yeah. Especially online. Fabric.com. Lit. Um, so if you... Joanne's kind of has a monopoly on the fabric market, at least in North America, which means they charge really high prices for things that they should not be charging high prices for. I have literally gone to Walmart into the fabric and trim and craft section and found three yards of the same exact trim that they sell at Joanne's, and I got the whole thing for $7. At Joanne's, it's $7 per yard. But if you can't find cheap fabric, when you do, afford it. Oh I am a mass scrap bag. I am an advocator for hoarding. <laughs> when it comes to cosplay supplies, I just have an entire bin that's just full of fabric. I used it to make your pin that I gave you today. I used it to make something on here, probably. I use my scrap bag for literally everything. If it's bigger than a sheet of paper, I save it. It's so useful for even patterning. Yeah. Like, what is it? I took old bed sheets in my house and I use them for patterning. I take patterns from old clothes you have. It's easy to find things to use to sew without actually sewing. And that's a big aspect of making Cut your, your own shirts into crop tops and steal it! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> no, I love that! 
Um, that's a big aspect of patterning is that you know commercial patterns can be really expensive, and especially if you find them like at Joanne's and they're not on sale. You can't use a coupon because they sometimes don't want you to use those coupons on patterns. Um, creating your own. Not actually that hard. If you kind of have like a basic concept of 3D things, you can probably figure out your own body. You I mean, like you're walking around in it. You kind of know it, right? <laughs> For skirts, it's always fold it in half, cut it. Yeah, pretty much. So things yeah, it's pretty much. It's <laughs> not as hard as it seems to steal patterns. Yeah, you can do it on paper. I like to use the paper I get in Amazon boxes. Like they send me like really big butcher yeah. paper, like brown paper, to fill in the box. I save that because it's so big and I use it to make patterns. I use old sheets only because I can try them on. <laughs> that too. That's also a good one. Yeah, you can also use things from thrift stores. You don't even have to get bed sheets. You can literally find a dress that you like at a thrift store, steal. cut along the seams. That's a pattern. In terms of making things besides fabric, get Crafty, oh my god. Um, I don't know if anyone here follows Sarah Spaceman on <laughs> oh Instagram. God. She's a huge cosplay yes. icon of mine. Whole girl is a master cosplayer. She has won many awards for her costumes. She does not use Warbla. Nope. Uh, Warbla, like Art of Wigs, is something that I think too many people go to and it's as a first Warbla. because it's so. Warbla is a thermoplastic. It's so basically, uh, you put it. So like, let's say I had this and it wasn't hard. I'd put Warbla on top, heat it up, and it would it adhere. molds. It to molds it. to it and makes uh, it hard. A lot of armor. It's good for armor, but there's other ways. So like, explore them. It's yeah, a great product, that. but it's a very expensive. If product. you are making a breastplate, it's Warbla. <laughs> if you are making a knife. Use not one. <laughs> well, you can even make armor with foam. Yes. Yeah. Craft foam. Like, craft foam is like, what, a dollar yeah. a sheet these days? Like, it's like so yes. much less expensive. Warbla does, the only reason it helps is even if you're making something out of craft foam, it bends. And if you're painting on top of that, it gets annoying. It's not that good. So, like, Warbla has its uses. If you're making a very, like, niche piece of armor that needs to be solid, Warbla. If you're making a not niche piece of armor. Here the thing, though. Uh, circa 2017, I was making a Ladybug cosplay um, from Miraculous Ladybug, and I was making the mask. So I chose to make it out of craft foam that I, you know, heated up to mold it to my face. I didn't put it directly in my face, that's really hot. I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't even have a heat gun at the time. I literally used a curling iron to heat it up in my dorm room. Like, guys, cheap cosplay, just be creative. Um, you don't need all these fancy shit. Um, so I molded that to my face, and then to make it stiff enough that it would, you know, stay on my face and not, like, bend and go crazy, I used hard coat Mod Podge. It's meant for furniture. It was like a That's couple bucks at Michael's. Yeah. <laughs> so think beyond Warbla. It's it's a thing that it's the thing that I think a lot of people first go to because a lot of people advocate for it. It's a very big name brand. But think beyond it. Get creative. I've made armor out of bra pads. You don't need Warbla. <laughs> Professional. Um, my pro tip: literally, Walmart is so amazing. I've never been to a Walmart. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. My favorite Walmart I is the Walmart in North Reading, Massachusetts. Oh, oh, uh, they sell oh, fabric. Oh. They sell trim. They sell universal sewing needles. They there. sell what? cutting mats and roto cutters. They literally have a whole sewing section. It's like a miniature Joanne's. A lot of Walmarts are expanding to make their craft sessions bigger. It's super useful for cosplaying. This is my That's my, oh, That's my decade cosplay that I got heat stroke in 20 minutes after the photo was taken. Oh. Oh. So I retired that cosplay. What did you got? So props are one of my favorite things to make. This is a prop, and I'm just gonna start by saying how I made this. This is cardboard layered together, hot glued together, with masking tape wrapped around it and painted. This is um, this is the only unique material I use to make this little thing. I use this type of plastic. I forget what it's called. Where you put it in boiling water, take it out, it's squishy, and it hardens to this. I know it's not what you're talking about. I just can't yeah, remember yeah. the name. It's, the it's like little beads. That's the only interesting thing. There's a ton of different brands of it. This is cardboard tape and Mod Podge, pretty much. And it's a knife, and it's pretty sturdy. So It's very sturdy. She threw it at my face earlier, <laughs> and I lived. And it lived. <laughs> so, we <laughs> first arrived. Yeah. We were in. Oh my god, no! no. <laughs> Stinky <Stop. Stop>. heel! <laughs> Thristers, if you're doing a prop that's like not, you need to make it custom, like if you want like a fake knife or a bat for another channel. Thristers, garage sales, Craigslist, anything like that. You can find them Halloween stores for fake weaponry. Go around Halloween and steal all their weapons. Go after Halloween, everything's on Right after Halloween, yeah. Pick 
paper mache isn't as bad as you think. Even things that like seem that's tape. That's straight up tape. You can it's not hard to do it. Basically like a cardboard base and then you paper mache over it. It'll be paper mache is one of my favorite personal cosplayers also on Instagram. I'm just gonna talk about all my idols today. Um, Acceleration Designs, that's like AX Acceleration. She's a another award-winning cosplayer. She professionally makes props and costumes. She's a professional fabricator. Them! I yeah, am the them. Um, she has a fabulous Harley Quinn cosplay, and her entire mallet, like a lot of the versions, she's done three different versions of it. Almost all of them are made of finger mache. Like it looks, and she, people punch it all the time at cons because they want to like punch the mallet. It has my, stood the test of time. My Deku mask was the first prop I ever made ever ever ever, and I was going to use foam. I was going to buy foam and make it, but before I even did any of that, I decided to make a paper base. And as I made the base out of like thick cardstock paper and layered tape around it, I was like, huh. This is sturdy. And so I literally just layered the tape nicely. And then I added some hot glue, a little cut for the straps, and I painted it. And it has held up so many cons. It can be like bent, it's flexible, I can attach it to my face, and it's made of paper. <laughs> so it's really, you don't need fancy materials. Like, look with what you have first. Yeah. It's so useful. Like, you don't need fancy stuff. That's kind of like the whole story of this panel. Yeah, don't buy expensive. Look in weird places. Here's the weirdest place I found a prop. Craigslist. Um, again, I've cosplayed so many versions of Heather. <laughs> a slightly <laughs> used well, croquet mallets. I was looking for a set of croquet mallets for Heather's. For probably six months. If they were on Craigslist, you know someone's gonna murder them. Right? <laughs> uh, I was looking for a set of them for probably a good six months. I was looking on eBay, I was looking at Target, I was looking at Walmart. Finally, I was literally on Craigslist in my film class one day, don't be me, kids, pay attention. And I found a guy selling a used croquet set for 15 bucks. All of the other ones I had looked at were 60 and above. So I was like, hell yeah! Come to my dorm and give me your things. <laughs> I will give you money. So once again, don't shop without coupons. And before you do go to a convention, a good thing to remember is you should review policies so you don't spend your money making something. I almost that brought you can't a Nerf gun in. and they almost yelled at me. So don't spend money making something um, for a convention and then end up not being able to bring it in. A lot of the bigger cons these days, like I think it's San Diego Comic Con, has um, banned anything that even resembles a gun. Um, almost everywhere requires orange tips for guns. Almost everywhere says no projectile weapons, so even if like, you want to bring a Nerf gun, if it can fire, they're not going to be into that. So, you know, don't waste your money or your time. Speaking of photo shoots outside of convention areas, and even in convention areas, y'all, y'all literally have computers in your pockets right now. The most amazing piece of technology to date, in my opinion. Um, so, if you have a friend, and you have a smartphone, which almost all of you almost certainly do. That's what we're doing in 20 minutes. <laughs> you have a camera. Um, don't as like you know, look at a, a posing or a photography video on YouTube for like five minutes. Figure out some angles. You know, think about what you want to do. Practice in the mirror, and go do a little photo shoot for free. And you buy your friend like a coffee afterwards. But you know, it's, it's free. Um, do one for them later. Yeah. Um, also, if you are a university student, this is a big tip. Um, if you are a student, there is most likely a chance that you can rent a camera for free. I say rent because like you need to return it and take good care of it. Art schools. But I'm not even at an art school. I'm like at a huge liberal arts college. Um, I'm like, glad I get a liberal arts degree. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have two useless degrees. Um, if you... Um, have like any sort of media center or tech center at your school. There's gonna be film students. We're, we're everywhere. Damn it, we're goddamn everywhere. <laughs> we need cameras. They want to give us cameras. They want to give you a camera too. Be like, hey, can I get a DSLR, like a little can and point and shoot, and take it with me for a few days? And they're gonna be like, sure. And then you can like go off to the convention and they will never know. <laughs> they won't know how weird you are. Like the memory. Normal. Like the memory. <laughs> a lot of them, you will have to use your own memory card. That's a thing to note. So if you have like an SD card, you'll probably want one of those. No. Take advantage of con photo suites. There's a photo suite at this convention. Yeah. Uh, I do have an asterisk here because um, if you have photos taken by a con photographer or any person um, at a convention who 
Well, here's the thing. I want you to know your rights. Because if you saw the Hogwarts photo shoot upstairs, they have specific release forms where you need to check off if they are allowed to use your image. I have had um, photos taken by a small con in the past, which I will not name here. <laughs> I was well, asking, I was asking, I was asking. <laughs> Um, I, I was at a small con last year where I had a lot of photos taken in cosplay and I was you know, like interviewed in cosplay and then I ended up after that having a really bad experience with a staff member and I no longer support that con. And now I greatly regret that they have my image. If you, if you are having your photo taken, know where it's going to go. Especially if it's by a free convention photographer, most likely they are going to use it for some sort of promotion on social media or their website or something. So if you use it, just know where it's going to go. Make sure you're comfortable. Look hard. So, one of our last but not least. Where's, your, wrap up. where's the demo picture? Is it not? Oh, I saved this one before. I oh. here. We, we had a cute picture. We had a That's before and after picture. Met. And then there's one of the most recent. I had just. We originally made this in Google Slides, and I had to save it to my computer because there's no internet connection here. And I saved the original version without our photo. So that's that. Yeah. Okay. We'll post it on Instagram. Okay. Okay. You're, you're the now, right now. Yeah. 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 Everyone take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, staying yeah. at conventions, that's another big part of cosplay. Oh my god, bring your own food. Cosplay food. Expensive. Or looking for a cheap, there's a Wendy's down the street. Just pop down the street. Um, that's just food is so pricey. That's another thing, especially in terms of like food or accommodation or a lot of things. The further away you go from the con, the less expensive it's going to be. Because, you know, convenience equals expensive. In terms of saving money, you want to weigh convenience versus price. The more convenient it's going to be, it's probably going to be more expensive. That's just the sad fact. So when you're looking for accommodation especially, it's really important to explore your options like everything else. Do your research. Don't just look for the first thing. Can you commute to the convention? I drove here this morning. Uh, can you stay with a friend? Can you have a sleepover? Here's a super secret Anime Boston tip. Um, do not stay at the Sheraton. Don't. Oh my god. Don't the do it. Elevators. <laughs> Not only is it ridiculously expensive, but crowded. The elevators, there's like what, four or there's, six okay. elevators? I have, there's always a line. Yeah. Shell. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my heat stroke Deku cosplay. Oh, <laughs> I was having a heat stroke. And I waited 30 minutes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and then I did it later that same day, I finally changed, but it was an hour. We were sitting there for an hour waiting for the elevators. One of my personal favorite things for saving money is to start a convention fund. This is like literally the concept of a spare change jar, where like whenever you have your spare change in your pocket or like an extra dollar, you drop it in a jar. I do that all throughout the year, and throughout like 364 days of the year, I just save that for Anime Boston. <laughs> just to spend on merch, like that's just my merch fund. Another huge tip, especially in terms of merch, because some of y'all go crazy with that. <laughs> Set a budget for oh my god. Set a budget for yourself. And importantly, try to bring it in cash. Not only is it gonna be really nice for the sellers, because not a lot of them take the card. Um, oh, it's, this card doesn't take card upstairs. Some of oh, they don't take it in the cafe upstairs. It's always important to have cash on you. But some of the sellers do take card. But if you bring in cash, it's gonna be easier for them ultimately. And you can't spend more than what you physically have with you. So that brings us to the conclusion about of our panel. In conclusion, do your gosh darn research. Don't buy the first thing you see. Compare prices. Look around. Take your time. Really know what you're going to get. Compare the prices. Use coupons. Buy things on sale. I forgot to mention that in the making cosplay and buying cosplay. But literally, Memorial Day sale. Right now, there's back to school sale. After Halloween. Um, Black Friday, huge one. Online, especially. Oh yeah. Rave thrift stores. Be creative, and most importantly, have fun. If you're not having fun with it, why are you bothering to do it? So, y'all got questions? <laughs>